I understand you just interviewed a special guest. What can you tell us? Yeah, Wolf, when we were doing the roll call yesterday, we were down here covering it from the floor. You may have seen a special guest in front of New York's delegation. That was Spike Lee. I just ran into him on the floor a few moments ago and asked him about what this convention means and what it means to have Vice President Harris at the top of the ticket. And this is what he told me. You're here at the at the Democratic convention. What does it mean for you to be here to see Vice President Harris as the, the Democratic nominee? I wanted to be here. This is not history, this is her story. She's going to be the first woman to be president of this United States of America. Blended family, you know, the whole Howard University, HU, you know, so this is a amazing moment in the history of these United States of America. And we gotta go, we gotta go forward, not backwards. We gotta go forward, we gotta advance. You know, I can bring equity around this nation where we lead the world. So, you know, I travel a lot of times and outside the United States. And when this guy was president, people, total strangers, would pull me and say, what the hell is going on? What the Donald Trump. On? Yes. I try not to say his name, but people, total strangers on planes just walking around all over the world saying, what is wrong with America? How did that guy get elected. So those four years where uh, the world was looking at us like with the side eye, like WTF. <laughs> and we know what that means. <laughs> Wolf, that was over there by the New York delegation. Tonight, I'm standing here by the Minnesota delegation. Obviously, maybe one of the most excited ones here on the floor. That's because a Minnesotan has not been on a major party's presidential ticket in four decades since Walter Mondale ran. And now, of course, Governor Tim Walz is preparing to speak in this convention hall tonight. And just to give you an indication of how excited they are as all the delegates are making their ways over to their seats, they have put Governor Walz's head on a two foot large sign to hold up tonight as he is going to be addressing this hall. And obviously what is one of the biggest moments of, of his political career, a moment for him to uh, introduce himself. Out of all the speakers who were on that list tonight, he is probably one of the least known nationally. And so tonight he's going to be introducing himself, not just to those here in the room, certainly not the Minnesota delegation, but to everyone who is watching at home, Wolf. And all of us here will be watching it very closely. Caitlin, thank you very, very much. Aaron, back to you. All right, Wolf. And joining me now is Charlemagne the God, host of The Breakfast Club radio show. Also the author of the newest book here, uh, Charlemagne, Get Honest or Die Lying, Why Small Talk Sucks. What's up, Aaron? And also the co-founder of Reason Choice Media. And Angela Rye is back, which is wonderful to see you. Thank you. Uh, Co-host of the Native Land Pod. All right, so you heard Spike Lee there. Mm -hmm. He's talking about Donald Trump. He, he doesn't like to say his name, but talking about uh, you know, how he feels that, that he believes that, that, that Kamala Harris can be the next president. You said something the other day, Charlemagne, that wasn't saying you don't think Trump can win, wasn't saying you don't think uh, any of that. It was you don't think Trump wants to be president anymore. I just want to play it. Mm -hmm. Here it is. He does not want to be the Republican nominee no more. He is hoping that Republicans do him the way the Democrats did Biden. He wants to be put out of his misery. You can hear it it's in too his late voice. <laughs> you believe that? A hundred percent. I think, um, you know, what Nikki Haley said when she said uh, the first uh, party to get rid of their 80-year-old candidate was going to win this election. I think that was that's going to come, come to be true. And I think that, you know, he's just over it. I mean, the guy did just get shot at, what, a, a month ago? And I think there's some PTSD involved. I think everything that you're seeing right now from Donald Trump is just mm -hmm. a, a response to trauma. He's just staying busy because he absolutely has nothing else to do. Or maybe it's just his ego saying, hey, I need to continue to run because I want to stay out of jail. But yes. I don't think he wants to be the, the, yep. the, the nominee in any way, shape, or form. Do you think that too? And do, I, and do you think it goes back to that moment when he was shot at? I don't think that part. I do think that he is running to stay out of jail. I think the Trump family um, saw quite a, a boost, <laughs> even economically, from his presidency. And I think Donald Trump would do anything to stay out of jail. He has a bunch of folks who follow him. Um, he won at least the Electoral College uh, in, in 2016. And I think that's what this is about. I, don't, I think that he has a huge ego and it gets in his own way. At some point, you got to say enough is enough, though, right? At some point, it's not worth it. You got all of these criminal charges. You're getting shot at. You know, I don't see no enthusiasm from him when he's on the trail. The joke's not even hitting no more. He's, he's never, he's never been a he's never been a big policy and person. I don't think he wants to be out here no more. 
So, uh, it, but I mean, I guess, and you're talking traumatic on a traumatic basis, psychological mm -hmm. basis. But Charlamagne, what about the jail issue? I mean, if he yeah. loses, never mind pardons and whether Biden pardons him the way out. I mean, just say, just say all that actually happens. You still have state charges that could result in a really long time in jail. That are I, I don't think we'll ever see Donald Trump in a jail cell. He, he's a white man in America who was a former president. There's a different level of privilege with that. I don't think, I don't think uh, jail is actually really? an issue. I don't think we'll ever see Donald Trump in a jail. Michelle cell. Obama talked about that. That's the real affirmative action, the kind that. Let you fail forward. Absolutely. <laughs> so she did talk. We've never even that. seen him in handcuffs. With all those criminal charges, we've never seen him in handcuffs. Just One mugshot. Mug shot. Like, That's it. No. Like, 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 I know people say that, like, oh, he's running because he wants to stay out of prison. Donald Trump is not going to prison. So I'm sticking to what I'm saying. I don't think Donald Trump wants to be, I don't think he wants to be running for uh, president right now. At Definitely all. hasn't been sentenced yet. Okay, you mentioned Michelle Obama and what she said. Now, she talked about, he had said, you know, talked about black jobs, right? Love that. At, at, the, at the convention a couple weeks ago. So she made a comment about that last <laughs> night, uh, which was very well received so in good. the room that we're sitting in here. Now, let me just play her. Who's going to tell him, who's going to tell him that the job he's currently seeking might just be one of those black jobs? <laughs> the best was the face after because we know <laughs> we know what that means. And yeah, I think that the reality of it is, is this has been a black job only once before and it's about to be a black job again. And the reality of it is if Donald Trump was anybody else, even in the Republican Party, he would not be where he was. Round of applause to Michelle Obama, too. A fa yeah. fantastic speech to audacity of uh, President Obama to go after her. He should have been opening that. for Michelle Obama. I agree with that. Hmm. Yes. That's interesting. All right, so can I ask you um, about RFK Jr.? I don't know if you just heard this, but we've just confirmed that he is going to get out on Friday and that there's a discussion as to whether he will at that time formally endorse Trump. Oh All right, God. so when you look at this, does that make a difference? Given, you know, you've talked to every single one of these folks. No, I mean, listen, I, I think that there is going to be a time in this country where there are third party candidates who can uh, have real impact. But when you say RFK Jr. got out, I mean, was he ever really in? Come on, we know it's a two-party system in this country. Yeah. You know it's going to be a Democrat. You know it's going to be a Republican. Somebody like RFK Jr. never really had a, had a, had a no. chance. He so may I'm, not have had a chance, but he had some numbers. And I know there were questions, Angela, does it go Democrat? Does it go Republican? Do you think, and obviously endorsements are what they are, doesn't mean people are going to go along with it. Yeah. But does it help Trump if RFK Jr. does give that endorsement? I think the only person that RFK Jr. is interested in helping is himself. He's shopping for cabinet positions. He says these crazy things. He's got these crazy conspiracies. He's been trying to land a plane on some type of virality for some time. It's not working. Uh, Shulman, you, you've interviewed Kamala Harris. Yep, a few All times. Right. All right. Um, and you, 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 everybody's come on your radio show. Everybody has to come on your radio show. She hasn't done a big interview in a while here, and certainly not since announcing. Are you going to talk to her soon? What do you think? What do you think she should do, or does she do better to ignore all those calls to talk and just keep doing what she's doing? I think what she's been doing is works because you know what she's been doing is hitting the ground. And I think you know sometimes we forget about the ground game in this uh, digital era that we're in, this era of interviews. Sometimes you know, not sometimes, all the time when you're actually on the ground, shaking hands, you know, kissing babies, actually touching people, that goes a long way. And I think she'll get to she'll get the interviews after the DNC. But you know, this week I think she got. She got bigger fish to fry, like going out there tomorrow and knocking a, a, a home run speech out the park. You know, the one thing on this that I think is so important is folks are spending a lot of time talking about what she's doing on the camera. Mm -hmm. There's also a behind the camera side. And I think one thing that's very consistent about Kamala Harris is you can best believe she's having conversations. She's going to have them on air and she's mm. certainly having them off air. And there's no gap between those two. All right. Well, it's great to see both of you to see in you. person Thank you for having us. and together. All right, so thanks and wonderful to see you both. Charlemagne the God and Angela Rye.